everybody! So today I'm bringing you another one take book review! Yay! Um, I actually do have a computer that works this time because if you didn't know I originally started doing these because my computer broke and I couldn't even edit videos but now my computer has the ability to edit I just kind of think these are fun and challenging and you guys seem to like them a little bit so I figured might as well continue the uh, the one take book reviews except it is kind of awkward I'm, I'm remembering now because I have to keep talking because there's no editing cool so today I'm gonna be talking about saga um, this is volume one and there are a total of seven there might be eight out at this point I'm actually not 100% sure um, this is a comic book series that they put together in volumes and release every couple of months and each volume has about six um, of the individual comics in it and you know it's this big continuous story um, I also have some notes to help me out because uh, these are a little bit challenging to remember all the points that I want to say off the top of my head um, so first we'll just start with a general background of Saga um, I'll do some non-spoiler stuff and then at the end we'll kind of talk spoilers of the uh, remaining volumes so for the first one uh, this is Alana, and this is Marco, and this is their baby. So it's interesting uh, because Alana is from a planet called Landfall. Marco is from its moon called Reef. And interestingly, Landfall and Reef have been in conflict, waging this huge war for how many generations? This huge, bloody, violent conflict. And Alana and Marco were soldiers on each of their respective sides. And Interestingly, actually, the war has gotten so, so big, it is an interplanetary war involving other species and other planets. So what happened, Marco was a prisoner at uh, the, I don't know, prison camp uh, that Alana was working in. Alana was guarding Marco, and due to some mysterious uh, circumstances, aka there was a book involved, um, they somehow managed to fall in love. They escaped and they ran away together and now they have this baby named Hazel. So it's quite interesting because it's kind of like what Romeo and Juliet would have been had they like, I don't know, survived. Okay, this heater is way too hot. Oh my God, I'm scorching my leg. <laughs> Worth it though, because it's cold outside. Um, so it's interesting because, yeah, like I said, this is kind of like if Romeo and Juliet had actually like thought it through and, uh, spoilers, not kill themselves at the end, idiots, um, because they actually have the kid and their goal is to break away from the war. They want to no longer be part of it, even though they once were a very big part of it. And they just want to kind of travel. They want to tour the galaxy. They want to find a place of peace to raise their child together. But of course that does not go according to plan because uh, several, uh, you know, peoples become very involved because the whole point of the conflict between Reef and Landfall is that it has been there for so long, it kind of, I, I get the impression that like nobody really knows why they're fighting anymore except for the violence against each other is so like substantial and so incredibly horrible that they just keep fighting. It's like this huge, continuously perpetuatingly that's not a word perpetuated violence because you know oh they killed my family so I'm gonna kill their family kind of a thing and what becomes interesting is that you know they want to get away from the violence and there is an assassin called the will and who was the other one oh yeah Prince Robot the fourth um, they are each hired by each of the sides to go kill um, Atlanta, Marco, and to take Hazel away. Because Hazel is a symbol to each of the sides that, oh wait, we can actually work together and, you know, become literally, like, and metaphorically, like, a new species, a new thing that is above all of this war. At least that's my takeaway on it. So, you know, the, each of the sides, high ups, want to get rid of Hazel. Um, they want to get rid of Marco. They want to get rid of Atlanta. So, of course, even though Alana and Marco would want nothing more than to just peacefully tour the galaxy, they are pursued by, you know, assassins, they are pursued by um, allies of Alana's people who want to kill her, and it's just, of course, you know, it's a comic. You gotta have some sort of conflict, and it just becomes this big chase across the, uh, the galaxy, which is really, really interesting and fun to read about. Um, the strong points of this particular series, and I don't want to like 
you know, open this and flip through all the pages because it is a graphic novel. It's, it's very, you know, it's picture heavy. So I don't want to like spoil all of it for you. Um, but one of the strong points is the art. I mean, okay, so I can't show you that. Hold on. Oh, and of course I can't edit. Oh, okay. That looks fairly clean. All right. So the art in this book, um, all of them is phenomenal. I love Fiona Staples has just, I mean, like, for goodness sake, look at that. That is beautiful. She um, has just, I'm trying to find like non-spoilery pages here. Um, it's so creative. They're, the characters are, you know, beautifully drawn. We've got stuff like this. This is my favorite character, by the way, Lion Cat. Lion Cat can detect whenever you're lying and it says lying. Um, I'll cover that up, but yeah, oh, oh, for goodness sake, there we go. We've got, that's Prince Robot, the fourth, etc. So you have not only this really, really cool concept of, you know, what is war? Why are we fighting? There go my notes. <laughs> and um, you have this incredible artwork that is, it's bold. It's very beautiful. It's very spacey. It's very, lots of color. Um, each of the characters are very colorful. Uh, all of this put together just makes this like very captivating, I just, just give me more of it please, kind of a thing. So, and the art is just beautiful throughout all of the volumes. Um, let's see, what else was I going to say? Boop, boop, boop. Yep, the assassins, not great. Um, I think it's kind of interesting how, okay, so, okay, that, that'll be a spoiler part. We'll talk about that in a second. So, the really, really cool things about this that I think make it very unique, the art style is amazing, like I said, the interplanetary uh, journey, and you go on different planets, you see different species, and it's just, it's so cool. My first read of this, I feel like, was just absorbing how cool it looked, and a little bit of the plot, and then now that I've reread it three or four times, I really feel like the story does stand up very well on its own. If this was not a graphic novel, I still feel like the story itself would stand up by itself. It's exploring your basic themes of, like, you know, war and peace and the eternal conflict. Kind of thing which is very interesting all right so now for a little bit of spoilers 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 press pause if you don't want anything to be spoiled um all right so just in the first one i wanted to talk about how marco has professed to never never kill again right that that's how it begins he he his sword is literally chained shut chained shut <laughs> chained shut um, which is kind of interesting because, you know, they were both born of violence. Um, you know, they're here, they have the kid, and he's like, okay, I'm not going to do this anymore. Um, and then almost like halfway through, he goes on a killing spree. Now, why does he do this? It's to defend Alana and Hazel because of, you know, the circumstances of them being hunted. They get cornered. They get backed into a corner, and their lives are at risk. And then immediately he's willing to kill this whole platoon of, of Alana's people, basically. Um without the context, if you know what I'm talking about, you know the context of, of that particular scene. What is interesting about this book, is that, or this series, is that there is this, you know, the characters, the main characters, Lana and Marco, have, t have told each other and us, the reader, that they do not want to participate in the same violence that they were born and raised with and around. However, when it comes to protecting themselves, they are willing to kill. So, we see that with Prince Robot and spoilers, seriously, if you don't want this spoiled, don't listen to this. You know, later Prince Robot loses his wife and his, I think also his baby, and he goes berserk. You know, the Will loses his true love, well, his his love interest, the stock, and he, you know, goes crazy and, and he, well, his is a little bit more complicated because he's got the whole like, my notes do not want to stay on my lap. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I just think that theme of, hey, killing is wrong, but it's okay if we kill for our own protection. I think that's kind of an interesting moral hypocrisy that you see throughout this. And I think that's intentional. It's, of course it's intentional. So I think that's really cool. Um, I also love about this how the relationship drama between um, Alana and Marco, so they're married. I don't, I don't think I literally ever mentioned that. They're married and they go through some pretty hard times. I mean, you know, spoilers, but Alana in one of these, in this one, I think, 
has a drug problem, has a pretty significant drug problem that resulted in, you know, some pretty hard talks between her and Marco and a pretty big fight that actually caused them to be separated for a little bit. Um, I really like how they are not lauded as being like, oh, the, the true great warriors of each of their sides. They're, they're fairly average. You know, Marco's got a pretty good, you know, sword fight and ability, but you know, nothing particularly special. They are supposed to be the normal people who are, who want the normal life and they are trying so hard to get to it and they can't get it. Um, throughout all of the novels, of course, they're being pursued and there's a lot of moral gray area and blah, 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 blah. So, okay, spoiler part over, spoiler part over. So if you made it through all of that, I think you'll realize that I am a pretty big fan of the Saga series. Saga series, if I didn't have a lisp, I sure do now. Um, I, I think I love the plot. I think I love how it depicts the characters very realistically. Um, the art is incredible. I really like the the uh, general storyline of, of the war. I think that's really cool and you know kind of speaks to us as human beings. So overall, Saga, incredible, wonderful. I like to recommend it to everyone. Um, just a brief little note, it does have some mature content. So if you're, you know, 12, uh, I wouldn't really recommend it to you. Um, but it's definitely for anybody else who's, you know, a, 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 above a certain age, I guess we could just say that. It's not like it's, you know, crazy, but just thought I would warn you in case you're sensitive about that kind of stuff. So that is all that I have for you today as far as saga goes. Definitely leave comments below. This looks like I'm saying double dislike this video. Please don't do that. <laughs> Actually, if you double dislike it, I think it would dislike it and then it would undo your dislike. So sure, feel free to double dislike this video. Um, but if you'll leave comments below so we can actually discuss Saga because I love talking about it. It's so wonderful and great. And I will leave it there and I'll see you in the next one. Woo, exciting times. Okay, that's horribly cheesy. Okay, bye.